What's up guys? Today, I wanted to talk to you about creating a win condition in your 2v2s decks. This is something that I've been seeing a lot of people missing out when they first start getting into 2s. In 2s, it's much less likely for your minions to trickle in damage on the imposing heroes, since the amount of damage that the heroes will be doing is much higher than what it would be if there's just one hero. This means it's not quite enough to just try to get good trades in, you need to make sure that you're pushing a win condition. So let me start by showing a rather basic win condition, I'll narrate the game and then we'll work into some more, let's say, unique decks afterwards. So the first and most basic win condition to have in 2s is the Demon Warrior. Not much changes for its strategy in 2s because not much needs to. By the time you're getting Demon Warriors out at rank 5 and 6, there's not really anything that they're going to be able to do to stop you. The deck you see me using is one I've had a lot of success with in 2s personally. I actually went 19-0 with it during one of my streams, and it only lost when my partner disconnected. This deck is entirely focused on cycling as fast as possible to start getting those Demon Warriors out, and then once the Demon Warriors start being big enough to actually push a lane, all the puffs in the deck will be able to get a ton of value on the board, and you'll, you'll snowball into a pretty flashy victory. I personally recommend this deck if you're laddering up by yourself as well, because it can, it can work pretty well with any other type of deck. You can even see in this game, I got matched with someone who is playing the exact same style deck, and it turns out that that deck synergizes pretty well with itself. Now here, I'm trying to cycle my, uh, my cards as quickly as possible in order to get the Demon Warrior out. I know right now I'm not going to be able to actually maintain the bridges since I essentially just have a ton of puffs and two drops, so I know pretty much anything they're going to play at this point is going to take over the bridge pretty immediately. So I need to get that cycle going on to make sure I can get a Demon Warrior that might actually be able to push back a lane before we get completely overwhelmed by any early push. Another great aspect about this deck is once you hit rank 1, your fast cycle will start helping out quite a bit with some cheap and easy damage. Now you'll notice in this game my partner and I actually have quite a few misplays. I mentioned earlier that I went 19-0 with this deck, so I had plenty of clips to choose from for this video. I wanted to specifically pick this one to help drive home the point about getting a win condition in. You'll see here that our opponents don't really have a win condition of their own, so even though they get the bridges and really efficient trades in, our heroes will stop almost everything once it gets to our base. You can even see here that we have a shock rock on our hand. There's a reboomer bottom lane, and we're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna let the reboomer get closer and wait for this. This is gonna be the best part. The reboomer's dead now, and we're gonna shock rock it because we uh <laughs> we're net decking this time. But you can see here that they have a lot of really good value minions. They're killing everything as it gets quicker. But these demon warriors, this win condition. Is just getting bigger, it's more effective, and we actually have an end game goal set out with this deck. Alright, now you can see bottom lane, our demon warrior is actually going to be able to push the lane quite a bit, so we can go ahead and attach some of the mana puffs, disruptor puffs, and heal puffs right behind the demon warrior. In about 10 seconds, these guys are going to explode and give us a ton of mana, and we're going to be able to cycle in even more demon warriors, get even more puffs out, and then this is right around the point of the game where you start snowballing out of control. So look, got a level 4 one down already. We had 3 mana left over. <laughs> we had, we're just getting a ridiculous amount of value in. The puffs are really sticking on board. We now have burned the bridges to deal with anything that's going to try to contest with them. And you can see Volko's first trades just helping take out anything that's even getting close. Demon Warriors are pushing the lanes even further back. And we're gonna we're gonna ride this pretty hard to victory. I don't think I've actually lasted until rank 3 into this game, but the best part about having Volko for rank 3 and having Demon Warriors is that third trait's going to give them rage and they're going to absolutely destroy it. But that's going to be game, and let's go ahead and move to the next deck. Alright, careful not to blink for this next one. This one is absolutely destructive. Uh, this is going to really showcase how much aggro you can get out and also how much protection you can have for your aggressive decks when you have two aggressive decks synergizing as well as this. So you'll see here we're going to be running a bunch of Blood Imps, a Guardian, and Rampage, Bannerman, all the stuff to just get this absolutely destructive wave that's going to be shielded by the Guardian. We're both running Black Hole in case stuff like that comes out. We'll be able to protect our heroes and then we can just cycle all these Blood Imps in here and just 
watch watch the damage when they're enraged, alright? They're getting real close to the hero. They're, they're about five feet away, and then they're just gonna like touch him. Oh, that was that was a living statue in its way. Now they're gonna touch the base. The annihilator's gonna get one shot off. It's gonna kill the guardian, but it's it's not gonna save him. That's that's kind of the destructive powers available in twos. All right, and then this final deck I'm gonna show you is a little bit more of a unique win condition that you'll see. Uh, typically, what you want to do with here is try to make the biggest and most baddest soul sealer po uh, possible. You can heal it up with healing fireball, you can enrage it, you can just keep buffing it up with spirit infusion. But ideally, you want to just group everything up here like we're, we're doing at the bottom. Throw out soul stealer so it can start getting its stacks going on. And then just put all of your buff spells into this. Unfortunately, it, it is really, really weak if your uh, enemies have a lightning bolt or any single target removal, but it starts getting to the point where even a Beam of Doom or multiple Beam of Dooms won't be able to stop this thing. You can also reset its attack with a uh, black hole. So in case the opposing heroes play a bunch of minions underneath your soul stealer, you'll be able to black hole. It'll make it so it stops selecting the heroes and it'll kill everything else underneath it, get more stacks, and start completely destroying. But you'll see here, once he's at 10 stacks and enraged, the amount of damage that he does is absolutely ridiculous, and since it's a flying unit, not many heroes can deal with that. And that's going to be all the games I'm going to show today. I hope I was able to showcase the need of having a set win condition in your deck with the first match, and then showed you some alternate strategies with the other two. It'd be impossible for me to make a video of every single win condition out there. This game is so well designed that you really can experiment with almost anything. So, try out your own deck types, let me know if you want me to showcase anything in particular. I know I will be making more videos in the, fu uh, in the future, showcasing even more deck strategies. So feel free to hit that subscribe button and be up to date when those come out. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.